Hurricane Beatriz skirting along the coast of Mexico on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 1st. A new month in the Eastern Pacific is certainly going now at this point it would seem, with Hurricane Beatriz the main threat right now, a hurricane warning along the coast of Mexico from Guerrero through to Jalisco. Hurricane Adrian further out to sea as well, and that's stronger, Category 2 at this point, although it is expected to start weakening soon. It's day 31 of Atlantic hurricane season and we still have a 30% chance plopped over the Sargasso Sea, not far from Bermuda, turning towards the northeast. Uh, it's got a small window of opportunity, I expect those chances will drop quite substantially if it doesn't do anything in the next 24 hours. In the eastern Pacific we've got our two hurricanes right now and it's not very often you see them active at the same time. Uh, but then again, it does happen quite a bit. Day 49 of hurricane season. Of course, one of them is affecting land right now, Beatriz, and we're watching that one very closely. Although it does appear that it may be starting to choke a little bit and perhaps some weakening will ensue. In the Western Pacific, there's no areas of interest right now, which is good news across the basin. There's a little area there off the eastern part of the Philippines, which is blowing up some convection that has been tagged in Vest 94W, I believe. And in the Indian Ocean, a big bulk of convection there in the Bay of Bengal, but generally things remain fairly calm here across the whole region um, and nothing really of note to talk about anytime soon. So that's the picture over in those basins. The last 24 hours on our rain rate satellite estimates uh, show that the Bay of Bengal has been quite active across the coast towards India as well and of course you'll be able to see the imprint that Beatriz is causing along the coast of Mexico. A very compact system it still is uh, and most of that rainfall has been concentrated very close to the coast. And here is some more recent satellite imagery of the storm in these afternoon evening hours. You can see daylight starting to fade over the storm on this latest imagery and you can see that structure has become a little bit less uh, photogenic in the last few hours. The eye feature was there for quite a while, it still is. The western side looking a little bit flaky though and it does appear to be shrinking quite a bit which is what the models had been forecasting that the storm would be uh, really uh, shrinking under the wrath of the mountains that can really shred up these storms. You'll also note that most of the convection is still over water, not much of it is over land, but it is producing some uh, significant thunderstorms that are bubbling up further towards the northwest, towards the province of Nayarit. In the west there you can of course see Hurricane Adrian as well. Its eye is not as clear as it previously was either, which lends speculation that it's probably weakening now. A few bits and bobs of convection blowing up over Central America and you can see a big area of storms uh, over Cuba right now. That's quite common at this time of year but every time that happens it can cause uh, flooding issues there as well. Sea surface temperatures look like this. Extremely warm still in the uh, eastern Pacific off the coast of Mexico where Beatriz has been, over 30 degrees Celsius, but you can see a big cliff edge there south of the Baja California Peninsula where those temperatures take an absolute nosedive, much more than usual. Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico, very warm now. Look at that. Temperatures have really rocketed up there recently, up above 30 degrees Celsius. Same too around the Florida Bay area, the Bahamas, Cuba, and into the Caribbean very warm compared to normal over large parts of the Atlantic. Western Pacific also has a few decent areas of very warm waters there, the northern Mariana Islands 30 degrees plus, Philippine Sea very good indeed and into the South China Sea where temperatures are also exceeding 30 degrees pretty much up to Hong Kong. Around Taiwan temperatures 29 degrees there as well. Bay of Bengal looking fairly warm too of course 30 degrees plus possibly in one or two little areas there. The Arabian Sea much cooler due to those trade winds that have kicked in over the last few weeks. Southwest Indian Ocean has cooled down quite considerably near Madagascar, of course we expect this. Around the Australian region, same as well, temperatures have cooled quite a lot. Not part, a significant part of the Gulf of Carpentaria below 26. And the South Pacific also on that slow cooling trend, uh, but it responds much more slowly down here than the other basins. 
In terms of anomalies, this is what it looks like compared to average. You'll note that the Atlantic is well above average over most of the areas that matter. The Eastern Pacific above average only in a small part south of Mexico, apart from the equatorial region, which is exhibiting significant El Nino proportions now, looking very healthy indeed with regard to that, but a massive cool pool there to the west of the Baja California Peninsula, which will really inhibit longer tracking storms, like Adrian for instance. In the Atlantic, oceanic heat content is looking very good across the Caribbean now from the central to the western, up through into the Gulf of Mexico. Lots and lots of energy building. Eastern Pacific may have taken the foot off the pedal a little bit there, but still looking decent in a few of those areas, including where Beatriz is right now, although it won't matter so much for that storm, it's pretty much too far gone close to land. Western Pacific also looking very good there. Computer models first looking at this Atlantic artifact, uh, and there is still a little bit of hope for it. The GFS is one of the most um, uh, aggressive with it. The Icon is also partially on board. Whether it could get to a brief tropical depression status, that's a question mark. And there it is with some rotation near tropical storm status as well. Uh, but it does only have around 24 hours or maybe a little bit more before it will start to really lose that opportunity. Well, here's the action in the Eastern Pacific, the two hurricanes right now. GFS shrivels it up completely very quickly as it moves quite quickly towards the northwest into the Gulf of California now, which is interesting. That's much further north than we were originally expecting it to go. And as a result, or possibly independently of each other, Adrian's track now takes it much further towards the west where it will see out its last few days. It will weaken really quickly once it gets beyond the southern tip of the Baja California Peninsula the same longitude of that and then those temperatures will really plummet uh, indeed it's already past that actually but those temperatures will plummet very soon for Adrian Beatrice there looking at the rainfall expectations you know it's not actually that much that's being expected by the model now although I would take caution in that I would still expect possibly up to 200 millimeters the model I don't think has initialized the storm fully correctly uh, but interesting to note that towards the end of that seven day period there's another little flush there uh, that provides quite a bit more rainfall leading the total accumulations there around 200 millimeters projected by the model but that could be nearly 300 millimeters along the coast of Kalima particularly and Michoacan as well uh, potentially up to that amount for the week total that is. So certainly lots of rainfall to come for the Mexican coastline. Into the longer range then, let's see if there's anything responsible for that in that longer range. This is day 5 to 10. We're looking out for maybe a tropical system. Yes, there it is. There's something trying to form extremely elongated at first, but eventually starts to get itself together in a weak tropical storm, or brief one I should say, that manages to intensify a little bit before landfall again. It's almost like a Beatrice repeat, uh, although it has much less chance of intensification. And another little system can't be ignored there as well near Nicaragua which is an interesting place for a storm to form especially in July now uh, so we'll wait and see whether that one happens scan the barcode and that will take you to the force 13 merch store where you can see all of our usual items we also now can be accessed directly on our store page store.force13.com and we also have our still waiting for Hone t-shirt as well because why not of course we do well, there's really very little to look at on the Silly Range. There is a little feature here in the Western Pacific. This is day 10 to 16, so we're in the middle of July now. It's quite a long way out. But a little system forming near the Northern Mariana Islands towards the end of that 16-day period. It is a precursor system. Can be seen rotating a little bit much earlier on. There it is. A small rotation near Japan as well, but it doesn't develop. So the Western Pacific looks like it's going to be kept quiet at least in the early stages of July, which is quite interesting and fairly unusual. You can discuss all of this on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat, and plenty more besides with over 3,500 weather watchers, whatever you want to call them. Well, it was July 1st, 2015. We were around, I think we did live events on this day or near this day. Tropical Storm Raquel was a surprise in the South Pacific over the Solomon Islands. Tropical Storm Chan Hom had just formed in the Western Pacific and Tropical Depression 10 had also just formed near the Philippines would become Typhoon Linfa. 
So both of those storms, I'm pretty sure, are prevalent in our memories, certainly in mine, probably because it was some of the first storms that go live for on Force 13. Eight years ago today, wow. Back to today then, the next name on the Atlantic naming list is Don. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Calvin now. And in the Central Pacific, of course, it is still Hone. I think it was, was it July 2019 that we had our last storm? Um, so it's been an incredibly, incredibly long wait for uh, Hone. In the Western Pacific, next name is Talim. And in the North Indian Ocean, it's going to be Tej. 27 storms so far this year. The average is 92. Sounds like we've got a long way to go, but it does come quite quickly. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, we've rotated to a new list. The first name this upcoming season will be Alvaro. In the Australian region, it's Jasper next up, and in the South Pacific, Lola. That's all for tonight. We'll be back again tomorrow night.